Fruit is, so he has a good idea that there should be a Dark Templar coming out to harass him relatively soon here. Probably followed up by Psy Storm in charge lots. This is an exhausting task for both players, for the Zerg to keep his Overlord safe and while still making sure that every Overlord can cover mm -hmm. uh, against the threat of Dark Templars, which is a very real thing. At the same time, Protoss has to be checking everywhere inside the Zerg's base, counting drones, mm -hmm. so you know how much they're trying to mass up versus how much they might be attacking you soon on, as well as just trying to kill off Overlords on the map. It, it's it's pretty taxing and uh, the heavy <laughs> relies heavily on somebody's ability to multitask. These guys are both already moving so quickly. It, like you may look at and be like, oh, they don't really have that much. No, no, no. They're moving so quickly you right now. Like every time a probe comes out, you have to tell to mine. Every time a drone, you have to tell to mine. You have to continually reposition these overlords. Try to scout. Send your lings around the map. Move your corsairs around. Move your dark templar around. There is a lot that they're both already managing. That's right. There's no second rally for workers either. So if you have your army rallied somewhere, you have to go back and nag. Uh, nab those drones, mm -hmm. tell them to get back into mining. And he's going to see now, uh, Zerg is going to stay in solid mid-game, uh, mid-tier tech, it looks like, for the time being. Dark Templar just cleaving off a few Zerglings here and there. Continues to scout the tech over and over and over, realizing that's still a Hydralisk den. By the way, uh, unlike StarCraft II, you can have way more workers mining minerals. Yes. Uh, it, there's not super saturation at, at expansions is, is not a real thing. You can have a lot, a lot, a lot of probes, yeah. like three probes, three drones for each mineral. And you're you're and generally you're just, and you're just gonna mine it out crazy fast. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's something else. You you with Protoss and Terran, you oftentimes just don't stop making workers until extremely late game, so that you can transfer overflows into new bases. Yeah, uh, you bleed into new bases very yeah. quickly in this. Well, the Corsairs still traveling around, seeing what they can find right now. Looks like Effort is taking a fourth base already here. Now, this is the most predictable fourth base location, although I don't believe Protoss has checked it just yet. It looks like he's much more interested in surveying outside the third base oh. to make sure there's no attack coming. Zealot Legs should be finishing momentarily yeah. here. I have no doubt that you're right about that, Tasis. What is he going to do with these charge lots? Where are they headed? Looks like he's going to scout this additional base. He's these hydras now, here. We, we, you got to remember the Lurker timing. Lurker eggs can block off a ramp, but Zealots can't kill yes. it. So he actually might be able to get these, even if these speed finishes with these Zealots, plus one's done. If he heads oh. northbound over to this base, he might be able to get the egg wall off up here. Yeah, and that would be a big deal. In the meantime, we do see that third base going up here for Bisu. Very go. important. Does he have here lurkers? We yeah, we're going to oh. find out. No! Oh, and but one Zealot glitches through. Oh, that's really annoying. You'll have to micro heavily against that. But it looks like while these are trying to kill that, he can go ahead and kill the Overlord. That means no Overlords are up here. If his Dark Templar is nearby, that could get some damage done. There's that DT. Is he going to send it up? Certainly another Overlord would be sent out here. Now, just because the Zealots uh, can't hit the Lurkers unless an Observer's over there doesn't mean that they can't run in and assassinate a hatchery as well. Yeah. It's, a, it's pretty tricky on both sides here. Mass Hydra coming up. This is definitely the way Effort views this matchup mm -hmm. to be played properly. And he may try to put some pressure over here on this third base. We have a pretty healthy amount of High Templars right now. Dragoons have been added into the mix as well, so he has some range damage in there. Looks the like he does catch some of these Corsairs, but this is a big attack coming right now. All right, the Zealots are now coming out here. Templars as well. He has to back up. Nice dodge there on most of that mm. storm. Yeah, that storm a little bit ineffectual. We do have cannons going up right now. He is uh, going to go ahead and back up. Look at this, the Dark Templar trying to sneak in, knowing that the army might be out of position, but some Hydras were left over. He's got to make sure that the Corsairs can't just come in and kill every Overlord he has. A lot of respect here from both of these guys. Mm -hmm. They do not want to overextend because uh, you could lose this game pretty easily from there. Nice <laughs> job keeping that Lurker alive. Yeah. Notice those missed shots. That's how high ground works in this game. You have a certain uh -oh. percentage of shots that actually end up missing. Wrong place, wrong oh. time for this Lurker. Owned. Pretty big, uh, pretty big play there, actually, to take out that one Lurker uh, on the map. Is there gas at that third base? I don't think there is, right? No, I There's believe no that's gas, a mineral-only yeah. base, yeah. So that would also make sense why they're both powering. Uh, he's mm. powering Hydras, and then we're going to see more Zealot Dragoon coming out here. Got to be very Ooh. careful as Protoss if you start to lose uh, Templars on this since you don't have a third gas. Uh, the Spire and Queen's Nest on the way. Queen's Nest is like the infestation pit. It's the, the building that you need to get the hive, and it allows you to make Queen's, which we almost never see, but we did see one of in that Zerg vs. Zerg round of four match. All right, the Dragoons, the Templars are coming out. Now, Protoss is starting to get a very balanced army. This is what you're mm. aiming to get. Enough Dragoons to engage Lurkers. You want to have enough Zealots 
that you can uh, get some good surrounds and cut off circulation um, as they're engaging you. Enough Templars to storm clumps that are just too big, and finally enough Archons to just do that additional splash damage. Mm. Now, if I'm seeing this correctly here from effort, in the upper left we see this blob of purple, not at the base, but just in between the um, top left base and the uh, one slightly below that. He's going to try to make that his defensive point, and he's probably going to try to take the top, possibly. Mm. We'll see. If you note, also, there's only two more bases left on the map, top and bottom. Yeah, that's right. They're expanding all over the place. It's going to be very hard to kill each other right now if they stay in defensive positions. It looks like Bisu is starting to walk forward. Oh! Oh, gotta Scourge be careful coming here. out, trying to kill off these Corsairs. This micro is pretty tricky up here. Yeah, that's a nice spread of Hydras oh. and Lurkers at the moment. Okay, good save here. They'll manage to keep those alive. Always handy to have those Corsairs stay into the late game because that way you can start to shoot down drops if they're coming at you. Mm. All right, here we go. Bisu getting ready to get some damage done, perhaps. A lot of Overlords just kind of randomly flying out here. Going to go ahead and lose a couple of them. Looks like he made a little Lurker Wall. That's really annoying for these Zaws to have to deal with. Four do get through, but those will be cleaned up pretty quickly. And the question is, is Protoss going to commit here? He's looking for an opening. Good job here taking out some of these. Uh... OK, he's actually going to, is he going to go for it? Is he going to try to actually come up here? Oh, I don't know if he should. I don't know. I don't think he's starting to bring his army down. Yeah, I don't think I don't that think he can this break this. At all. But he can stay here on the low ground and mm. always engage favorably against the Zerg. Yeah, I, I would like a move like that if he just stays down here. But if he goes all the way up, look at that. See those Hydras waiting? He wants him to try we, to walk up this ramp. We see something happening at the top. I'm not sure what it is. Is it three? It's three Zealots. It looks like he wanted to try to poke in and maybe uh, kill drones up there, and that might have been the function of him attacking over there. Oh, yeah, and by the way, guys, like getting units up and down tight ramps or tight areas through chokes and whatnot is way harder. The pathing is very weird in uh, StarCraft 1, so... It's a lot harder to do. If you get into one of those oh. positions, it's hard to go get away, but here he we go. He gets both those observers. Oh, my God. A he lot of side storms, though. Although I don't see any lurkers there anymore. He already killed them all off. Yeah, he just wiped those hydras clean, too. Modelings out, and these should be cracklings very shortly if they're not already. And Looks that like he's means gonna that rotate this, again. a heavy Dragoon army is not very good against attack speed upgrade Adrenal Zerglings. Now note, on this map, which is a one-on-one -on -one map, uh, the bases are all very spread out, so it becomes uh, a huge multitasking nightmare mm. to try to defend all these locations at once, which is why you see both the players with this center control army. They're trying to have access to anywhere and everywhere, um, whether it's a counterattack or to just uh, actually try to shove in. Mm. All right, well, looks like he is trying to push forward right now, utilizing uh, Psionic Storm as well as these Dragoons to break through. This and is very tough to do, though, you know, going up a ramp trying to do this, especially when you know there's a bunch of Zerglings up there. He's right. continuing to press forward. He's going to back up for just a second and try to regroup. Morphine Archons here, slowly keeping the pressure on here. It's very important that when Protoss does this, he's not uh, hemorrhaging units. Like that. <laughs> uh, well, he loses that Archon, unfortunately. Definitely a very valuable unit. Archon's uh, really, really strong in StarCraft 1. Yeah, very, very powerful units. Staying back, but there's Zealots that are going to be running around here. If you note, he's been picking off Lurkers uh, over time, which means uh, there might not be enough Lurkers to defend the upper left. Zerg and Protoss also eventually going to have to take either the top or the bottom. Uh -oh. Look at this. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Zealot run by that other way. What does he really have up here? He has a few Zerglings. Looks like he's going with the rest of his Zerglings up to counter this. This might give him a time that he can actually poke in somewhere else with his main army, but no, he's actually going around the other side with it. I believe Protoss is ahead in upgrades right now. Uh-oh. Now, there's a reason why that Zealot's there to spot exactly that. He may do a DT drop as well in the main over here, mm. and I think that's why the Corsairs are coming down too. Oh, could be. We saw that it worked to great effect in the previous game. Getting about... 10 to 13 drones on Fighting Spirit. These links coming in here trying to get rid of any of these Templars if they can. And looks like they are going to be pretty effective at that. Here comes that drop. Oh, what is in there? It is Four in fact DTs. our Templars. That He's is gonna a go lot right of the spores. These obviously can one-shot links. Well, nope. I mean, that's a yeah. lot of links. He's got so. good defense. He's going to have to back up, relocate, fight another day. Mm -hmm. By the way, top center expansion was shut down. Nicely done. Oh, and look at that. He actually has quite a few uh, Scourge patrolling outside there, looking for any shuttles coming out, possible Corsairs as well. 
And he's going to try to take the bottom. Now, he's going to have to fill that entire thing up with cannons, and mm -hmm. it's going to be up to effort to try to use Defilers with Dark Swarm to take that out. Oh, but he's already sending a lot of Zerglings down here. He may be able to clean oh, it up right away. He might be able to just block this off, though. The, 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 he the has links. an Overlord just to the left, so here we go. He actually does get that in there. And, yeah, of course, with these attack upgrades. I think Protoss just wins this, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, All right, now he needs to scramble and make cannons like ASAP here. Zerg starting to spill down from the north. We're going to need to have some size Storms mixing in there as well. As you look at that mini-map, guys, you see that we have yellow all over the place. Effort starting to bleed down with more Zerg units right now. So it's actually you know, catching quite a few hydras. There's been so much zoning in this game, but I think actually Bisu's doing the better yeah. job. He's just slowly, he's being very patient. I think we have a mass drop. Do we have a mass drop in the main? Oh, oh my god. This is a really big deal, guys, and a lot of Zerglings start to pop out. These kill buildings so quickly. Oh, no! Dark, Dark Swarm. Swarm goes down. The cannon's absolutely useless. And it also looks like Zerg might be able to take out the bottom base. Lings and Reavers coming up now into the main. He has to save as much of his tech as he possibly can. Oh, we this also seem to have a counterattack here by the Protoss in the middle. Dealing a lot of damage in that main base. Not able to get up the hill either. Those Dragoons can do no damage to the Lurkers under those Dark Swarms. Nobody able to get the top or bottom base. These minerals are running out quickly. Indeed they are. We do have some speed on these observers now as he walks forward. Going to try to clean up everything By the that way, killed his base down at the bottom. Uh, he did not get anywhere near as many of the tech structures as I, as I thought he was going to get. And he did get a good amount of overlords. So Bisu might be safe for a little bit later. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right about that. I believe he did end up uh, killing quite a few pylons, but he didn't see any in control <laughs> pylons in there. So it looks all right. <laughs> the Templar tech is still safe, and he's yeah. still got the observatory and the robo. So. I mean, that didn't actually affect Protoss as much. And let me tell you, man, you can lose everything so fast. Yeah, it, if you're not careful. really plow through buildings so, so quickly. All right, well, we do have effort moving out here once again. Going to go ahead and clean up these Zots that clean up his base up at the top. All right, so he has to come down here and get rid of this one Hydralisk. And hopefully he can actually reclaim. Oh, nicely done. Ooh. Taking out those Scourge. He might want to park those Corsairs over the outside of his main. So if another drop comes mm. in, which I think it's actually happening right now. It the might be, this. actually. Oh, no, no it's not. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought there might have been a bunch of Overlords there. Oh, uh -oh. look at this. They this both want expand here at once. It's so funny. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Drone beat him to well, it. It's effort space, piece who back off. Looks like uh, he might just try to cannon rush that while everything else is going on. Zerg is actually hoping to get uh, Protoss out of position by uh -oh. attacking him over here. I don't think this is a wise decision, though. Oh! oh! Double Reaver does some great control. Yeah, Reaver is a great way to try to counter this Lurker Dark Swarm combo. And yeah, I think you're right. Effort is not going to be able to get anything done. He even brought a Defiler with that. So that had the potential to do a lot of damage. Now but Bisu, just too quick. What's funny about this is he can actually keep dropping. Um, Zerg can into the uh, this lower expansion. Now Zerg's also, it seems like there's a hatchery, uh, if I'm judging the minimap correctly, it seems like there's one being made up there as well. So Bisu's going to have to take care of uh, at least one of these bases and secure it for his own, or this game is going to slowly go to Zerg. Mm -hmm. You have a Lurker Egg morphing right here, but he's going to be able to clean everything up very, very quickly, do that nice size storm. In the meantime, we do have effort cutting across a map with some Hydras and Lurkers. We haven't really gotten a look at the bottom right side of the map, so I'm not entirely sure what's there to defend. Oh, Zerk sending everything. Oh, there's a big flank, though. A lot of Zealots coming from the other side, and that is a big deal. You do, you totally want to flank this type of army. A plank goes down on those Zealots, but it's too little too late. There's enough Templars out here to possibly storm out this entire army. He needs to rotate back over here to the left side of this attack. All right, he's coming up, trying to get rid of all of these High Templars. A Dark Swarm does go down, but with the Reavers here as well, this should be pretty easy to hold. A Plague goes down, taking the health off of those units so quickly. These Dragoons not going to be effective underneath this Dark Swarm. A little bit of scrappy play here by Effort. Um, but again, the bottom base cannot be occupied. However, the top base is not contested at all. Now look at that, the Dark Swarm, just so annoying, has to use the Reaver Scare. Splash damage can hit under that, under that, but no no ranged attacks. So that's, that's right. kind of what you're you're watching right there. Okay, so he's come down here, but once again, Links are over here. He can't quite take that base. He might need to move those Corsairs actually over to the, uh, the bottom to stop the drops mm. that are coming up over here. He definitely does not want to lose his probe either. Yeah, that would be very, very annoying, but okay, the AI is such. <laughs> the probe makes it right through there. Going to be able to make uh -oh. his nexus. Oh, oh, no! Oh, my God. Was that... That wasn't the Reaver shuttle, was it? I think it was, man. I don't oh, see the Reavers anywhere man. else. Man, that would be so brutal if that's the double Reaver shuttle. Nicely done there with the storms. 
keeping those Templar valuable. He has to actually push back the Defilers over here. He can't have more Dark Swarms coming down. Oh, and he picks the Defiler off. Yeah, Very really nice pick off there. Going to get that Archmon as well. Corsair is coming in here now. He can start taking out Overlords in the main. Again, Zerg has the uh, the top base. It doesn't seem like Protoss is going to be able to reclaim this. We do have Corsairs now coming over here and tearing through the remainder of these Overlords. But Bisu is not leaving <laughs> enough of his army with this to help yeah, defend. With no units there, just a drop of four Zerglings might be able to shut that down. Shuts down the cannons at least. In the meantime, Effort coming down with the full force of his army right now. Bisu coming Reaver, in here to, but yeah, sorry, Bisu coming here to reinforce. Uh, it's not quite enough at the moment. Coming around the side with the rest of his units. Great size from there, shredding those Hydras. Oh, but these Dragoons are going to eat it in about two seconds here. Sysorm goes down on the Hydras once again. More and more Zealots come out, but uh, Bisu's army is shrinking. Yeah, it's shrinking and very quickly. I mean, he can't actually take on an army that big. Has effort actually zoned him out? He might not be able to acquire this bottom base. That's really been the story of this game. Two DTs coming up here. But uh, he can get Overlords over here oh. very quickly. He's going to go ahead and plague those DTs, and there it goes. Plague some of his own units as well, but at least that detects them. Gets to clean those up. All right, the Nexus is still making. He's going to try to push forward here. There are Reavers to help defend against the Dark Swarms, but Plague is going to be a real problem. Now he does have two Reavers right now. Let's see what he can get done with it. And uh oh, the Hydra's just uh, targeting down that shuttle in a matter of seconds. But look at this great scarabs from these Reavers. Yeah, he's going to at least keep this one Reaver alive. Okay, okay, he's still got the bottom base. He's got to get cannons up here. He needs to get more reinforcements. By the way, if you look at the uh, mini map here, this base almost mined out. Uh, everything else, okay, he's still got that one up and running. Yeah. But, but he needs to secure this bottom base. And by the way, there are no more bases to take on this map. We <laughs> could end up with this map mining out if it goes on for much longer. It is definitely a possibility here. We do see another Defiler being taken out. A lot of links coming around the side. Oh, man, Effort's macro machine is really going right now. Look at that mini-map. Look at all the purple swarming around. He's coming down now. Now, Protoss needs to turtle back in this little location. He wants to make all these units go through this bottleneck. Yeah, he and Storms, are, if he actually starts casting it, there we go, are going to be incredibly Whoa. effective. There's almost no way. He's got to try to drop on top of this, I think. Yeah, we this need to see little some choke is just so hard to get through right now. That Reaver is well dealing tons of damage. A couple cannons coming down right now. Look at this. He's just sending in a couple links, trying to get the Scarabs out of that Reaver. He the, Scar the Reaver can shoot faster than it can make Scarabs, so you can deplete it and get a little timing in there. Yeah, that's a very good point. He's going to go for that drop. We don't have a ton of probes mining from this, and Corsair is not over here to help hold off this drop. In fact, he's not mining. Remember how much uh, multitasking uh -oh. is required in this game. This is a really good move coming up right now. We have a lot of Hydras dropping on top of everything. He's got to cast some Storms or something, but looks like uh, actually these Dark Templars and Zealots doing a pretty good job of cleaning that up. Yeah, actually, I guess that was some really good game sense. He just realized he doesn't actually have to Storm that. Well, he's going to have to do something here. These are actually starting to break through. Oh, man, the High Templars being picked off. Very few units actually left oh! over. Oh, and he cannot let that go down. He's going to do a counterattack and said he's going to sack that base down there at the bottom. Yeah, it doesn't look like he has any chance of actually knocking it out. Goes ahead, pushes in here with Double Reaver, with these charge lots as well. He's going to be able to oh kill my God, so, he's many so many drones. Unreal number of drones being picked off. That was the majority of Effort's workers. And keep in mind, the upper left base is close to being mined out. All right, well, he is going to snipe this base. That's very, very important indeed. Great micro there, keeping that shuttle alive against the Scourge. Looks like he might try to do a Storm Drop, Reaver Drop. I'm not sure what's in this. Yeah, I think it's High Templars, but let's see. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Nice, oh. nice save. Hit. Otherwise, oh. he would have lost the remainder of his workers. But again, that base almost mined out. <coughs> Bisu's still floating it at the bottom right. If he can get his army maxed out or close to that as possible, he might be able to try to push in here. Mm, well, look at this. I love having the Scourge over there. That makes it very difficult for him to pick up those Reavers and move. The Reaver is the slowest unit in the game. So you, By far. you never walk across the map with it. it. It's such a rare occurrence. You need a shuttle. But, oh, oh, another shuttle. shuttle taken out. This is really rough. He's kind of stranded up there. Yeah, I think that's the remainder of his army. Also, Zerg's expanding over here at the bottom. Real war of attrition here. Oh, this is really rough. Lurker's over here to defend. Bisu looking like he's in really good shape. Um, excuse me, not Bisu. <laughs> Effort looked like he's in really good shape. There's, we're, it's been so long since we've casted this in this matchup. Uh, no, seriously, though, Effort, uh, 
he might be able to close this out. Mm. I he absolutely could. If he wins this game, he wins the tournament. That's so. it. That's the end. But he's almost mined out. Oh, oh my oh, God. Great play. Perfect tech switch here. Nothing left to deal with these Mutalists as far as air units goes. And this is going to be the end. This will be GG. This, this was an absolutely brilliant play by him. Because he took out all of those Corsairs, uh, there is no anti-air. And this means he would have to rely on Dragoons and Archons and some Templars to try to deal with the Mutas. So this is a perfect tech switch. Yeah, this this leaves Bisu with almost no outs. He really needed those two Reavers. He lost a lot of units there basically for free. Effort is taking that bottom middle base. And what does Bisu do? His ground army is just so small. Yeah, he's in a lot of trouble right now. Uh, he's going to try to come in here, though. Not very many things mining from this. He's going to do a quick storm. Does get one drone. Going to go ahead and head out. Remember, uh, Effort's practically mined out his upper left base. He's almost mined that out, so there's hardly any mm. drones here. Yeah, his economy is very small at this point as well. He really needs to send his drones down to that bottom middle that he just took, but right now this is so tough with those mutas flying around as well. Okay, he's gonna try to slip back in here. Looks like the mutas have found the shuttle. It's gonna get low. He drops this. He's gonna try to storm those, uh, those mutas instead. Storm's right. going down now, taking a lot of damage, really softening them up. Yeah, he's dealt a lot of damage to him, but he's got to kill him or they can regain their health. Now, this is some good unit control. Just staying outside of those storms. They're Ooh. all solo. Oh! And Takes action. out the rest. But he lost all of his high templars for that. And now it's time for effort to attack, starting to move forward with the rest of his units. Yeah, this is going to be really tough for Bisu to hold. He'd have to get something over there in the bottom center to try to take out the workers. Uh, again, it's, it's Zerg, even though they both have a lot of units. Anything they lose from here, it's going to be really hard to replenish. All right, here he goes. He's coming down. Bisu running away with the few units he has at this base. Just about nothing left over for Bisu. You can see the look of resignation on him over there on the left-hand side. Yeah, he's in a lot of trouble here. Bisu slowly hemorrhaging units. This small force pushing in and stopping circulation. And that's going to do it. GG. Effort has done it. He's beaten Bisu. Many regarded Bisu as the greatest player in the world right now, but not tonight. Tonight, Effort is king. He certainly is fantastically done there by Effort, really showing us the power of his Zerg versus Protoss. Really technical last game there. Yeah. Uh, did come down to these two bases on the farthest possible spots from each other. Effort secured one for long enough in mind from it. Bisu managed to get his, but then sacked it to wipe out the top in a weird mineral position where he, knows, he knew that Effort would ultimately mine out quicker than Bisu if Bisu could just hold and expand to the top. But with great teching, Effort takes out the, uh, the shuttles, takes out the Corsairs, and then switches into Muta Tech, which allowed him to wipe out the yeah. rest of Bisu's important units. That was a great finishing move right yeah. there. Bisu was just not prepared for that without his Corsairs. Yep. Effort played a fantastic game, showing his micro, his macro, and his tactics all at once. Guys, thank you so much for joining us here today. We're going to be going into an interview shortly, which will get translated for you by Sojung. Indeed. I'll go ahead and switch out with Sojung. And uh, it Bye, has Artosis. been a pleasure. And uh, Artosis, I know he's gone. He's been sick all day today, so I'm really glad he was able to make it down here. Good job casting. What's up, Sojung? Hello. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that uh, Artosis is sick tonight. We had sick games, though. We did have sick games. Yes. Everything was sick. Hopefully, I'm not sick after this now. We'll see. <laughs> Go ahead and do this uh, translation. Okay. I haven't seen effort since he left CJ Antis. It's been a long time. Well, effort took down pieces, rivers, and everything, actually. Templars. And effort has kept his promise. Effort did not fear a Pisu. It's been six years. It took six years for Effort to take this win, victory for this season. Well, when I was uh, starting to practice for this competition, I didn't know I would make it to the finals. I wasn't able to adapt to Windows 7, so I was under a lot of stress. But I did prepare hard, but and that's why I was able to get good result, 
results. I will try my best to show you guys better games. Still talking about the OS. But he won against Bisu. He was able to adapt to Windows 7, the new OS. All the bad conditions for effort, but he still overcome those stuff and was able to take this win tonight. Well, among all those accidents, but thank you for all those fans who supported me. And because, uh, thanks to you guys, I was able to make it here. And when I was preparing for this competition, a lot of ex-CJ teammates helped me. I'd like to thank all of them. I think he means uh, Bird War players. Well, not directly, but I was indir uh, indirectly affected by other players too. Which is Hero, I think. Bird War Hero, the other hero, not the one in StarCraft 2. Asking if he had any questions, you know, asking himself, will I ever, ever play in front of so many crowd again? And there are indeed a lot of people tonight at the Freak Up Studio. Let's see how he feels. <laughs> Well, I didn't know this many people would come down to the studio. I was really surprised when I came here. I just feel that, you know, Bird War is still popular. It's, it hasn't died yet. I just, for myself, I think this is the start for me. Well, Bisu, well, even though he took this one against Bisu, he is, Bisu still is a talented player for Bird War. Well, let's hear for Bisu, who made this scene quite um, amazing tonight. He's a great op uh, opponent to go against. Well, Pisa has been showing good results too for esports, and Castle Park is asking if uh, Pisa has affected effort. Well, for the interview before the matches, I showed a lot of confidence, but also for myself, I was very nervous before the match tonight. I think I was lucky because Bizu was in good condition and I took this win. Well, I didn't uh, bring my family here on purpose. Everyone's busy, but you know, I know everyone's busy, especially the fans. But thank you for coming down to the studio. My friends too. Uh, I'm really thank thankful. And even before the matches, a lot of support came to me, but I couldn't really smile because I was really, really nervous. But now I can smile a bit. I'm very, very grateful to all the fans who supported me. Well, now we're going to have the awarding ceremony. Third place, second place, and then first place for today's Star League. For third place, we have Mr. Seol from Kongdu Company. I think his ID is Sharp when he was a pro gamer. And this is Sharp getting ready to be awarded third place for Star League. About $3,000, right? Yeah, about $3,000, I believe. Yeah, that's about what 3 million won is. 
많은 선수들과 그리고 많은 도움을 주신 서경종 대표이사님께도 뜨거운 박수를 보내주십시오. And now applause for CEO of Kangdu Company, who just awarded Sharp. And now for our second place, it's Pisu. Well, he can't come out of the booth right now. He wasn't able to actually, so he couldn't do the interview afterwards. We have Africa CEO Mr. Saul to award. I really love his English name. Uh, Mr. Saul, he has like an English name. Oh, the CEO of Africa? Yeah. It's Kevin. Oh, right, right, right. So, but today, Mojin Gelsing John has been able to win the award of Kim Tae-kyung. The Taekwomin Star League has also been loved a lot during the competition. This league has been loved a lot during the competition. This league has been loved a lot during the competition. Our second place winner for this league is Pisu. It's kind of like awkward to say the players' names without the team names. Like I would normally say, SK Telecom Team One Pisu. It's okay. And now five thousand dollars approximately for Pisu. You know, he actually drew the eyebrows today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw them doing that. And now, only one left to go. It's the person who has breathed life into this league. Marketing head for Vant 365. Has prepared a lot of gifts. A lifelong support from Vant 365 for winners and second place winners. He take, takes thirty thousand dollars. Money, 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 money. And he gets to use all the skincare products for, uh, for free for a lifelong time, I think. Lifelong? Yeah. That's not Forever. bad. Yeah. That's like the marketing CEO from Vont. Damn, that's not bad. Yep. Congratulations, effort. You did it, man. 3-1 against Bisu. Well, I think this is it. So you guys can close it off, and I will hand over the mic to our toasters. You're welcome, guys. Good translating as always. Good work. And the toasters has returned. What's up, buddy? Great, great tournament. It's been a beautiful day here today. It's a lot of money for effort. Yeah. And uh, I think you guys can see just by, by the way, the Korean numbers are like off the charts right now. Yeah. Uh, and we've way exceded our expectations here for uh, yeah, the English viewers. Over 17,000 concurrents. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. That's right. And of course, uh, we also, I guess, we're trending. Brutor was trending in the United States. That's pretty cool. Sick. You guys are the best. Thanks for joining us, guys. Continue to talk about this. Spread the word. Uh, we are hoping this is going to become a regular thing. I'd love to cast some more. Man. Why not have StarCraft 2 and StarCraft 1, the two best RTS games ever made? The two best games ever made because RTS good correct, is the greatest type of game. That's right. Oh, wait, we might actually get Sojunk back up here. Yeah, I'm not so sure. I think there's an announcement. Or maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> I thought, I thought there not was, completely not. sure about that. Oh, oh it's us. There we are. Well, Artos, this was fun. Yes, it's uh, fun. I had a fun time casting that one day of the semifinals with you. <laughs> and um, after a lot of pleading and begging and whining, we finally got Africa. Put this on here. The yeah. viewers were great. So yeah. thank you guys so much for joining us here. Yeah, and sorry I was sick today, but I hope you enjoyed the games anyways. Uh, StarCraft 1 is a fantastic game. 
game. It's really fun to play and watch, so you can definitely give it a try at some point. It's not competing at all with StarCraft II. They're completely different yeah, games. Totally and, different games. And they don't even really eat into each other. StarCraft One doesn't really have new players. So That's true. It's basically yeah. watching a bunch of legends play and a bunch of hard players right. play. So. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I mean, I'm just in a great mood. Uh, I'm only sad we couldn't go to game five. That would have been cool. Yeah. But uh, really cool games from Bisu. Really great plays from Effort. I especially like that last game. We really saw uh, it was a war of attrition. They were running out of resources, and eventually, you know, every base on the map was taken up. And uh, that's what a great StarCraft One game looks like. You know, you expand very quickly. Yeah. Um, hopefully, we're gonna have a lot more of this in the future, guys. Thanks so much for joining us here. I'm not sure because this is like not the league that we normally cast. If there's anything else that we're supposed to be covering. I know that uh, there's the some sort of announcement tonight, but, well, I don't know what it we is don't know, or, yeah, I don't know if it involves or what's the, going on, the so. English cast or whatever. Um, but look, this was great. Uh, really fun games. And uh, guys, thank you so much, those of you that spread the word. Yeah, we really to, to do appreciate that for yeah, everyone seriously. who's tweeting and, and posting on Reddit, Facebook, what have you. You know, my uh, attitude is that no game should go away. I mean, you look at a game as old as chess, right? I don't want chess to disappear yeah. because some other board game comes out. I think yeah. that, um, you know, all different sports, all different, you know, puzzle games or strategy games, fighting games, you know, you see with a Smash Melee how much attention that's getting. That's because it's still a great game. It yeah. still stands the test it of time. It doesn't become not a great game because something with better graphics comes out or that's something right. uh, that's easier to control comes out or something like that. There's great games spanning the whole thing. Like, there are absolutely 8 bit games that I still love. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Some of these games on Nintendo, even Atari, they're still playable today. Why not celebrate them as well? Indeed, indeed. And um, I believe that's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Artosis, great job as always. I know you're really sick, so I hope you feel better and get some rest. I and will do. our champion is Effort. Props to him. I can't believe. How fun this has been, man, to be back casting an old school game. If you're unfamiliar with Artosis and myself, we cast the GSL Code A and Code S for StarCraft 2. That is on every Wednesday and Friday. Mm -hmm. And you can find us here. It's roughly same time, same place. Nor an hour later than when this broadcast started, so 6 o'clock Korean Standard Time. And um, join us there as well. We love you guys. Thank you for being with us. Good night.
네. 항상 놀라울만한 소식을 전해주시던 서주교 대표님이시거든요. 네, 오늘도 뭔가 좀 많은 e스포츠 팬들의 가슴에 좀 불을 지펴주지 않을까 그런 생각을 해보고요. 안녕하세요. 네. 예, 이렇게 영하 20도가 되는 날씨인데 이렇게 많이 찾아주셔서 감사합니다, 여러분. 그 아마 지금 채팅창에 또또 아재 설명충, 뭐 진지충. 또뭐 행노잼 뭐, 뭐 많이 나올 것 같은데 그 오늘 잠깐 여러분들 헤어지기 전에 네 가지만 한 4분 동안 공유 말씀을 좀 나누고 싶습니다. 사실 지금 아까 철구방에서 동시 접속자가 4만 4천 명 같고 지금 아프리카 TV에서 10만 명 동접은 넘은 것 같아요. 그리고 트위치에서 아까 1만 7천 명 같고 중국 아마 말스 TV 하고 후어마우 TV에서 한 2만 명 동족 갔을 것 같아요. 그러면 오늘 그저 김정은 선수하고 김태경 선수 결승이 전 세계에서 동족으로만 제가 보기에는 아 40만 그러면 한 200만 가까운 선수가 본 거죠, 그죠? 네. 그래서 2016년 아 대국민 스타 리그 아 계속 이어서 전반기와 하반기 아두 차례. 아, 더큰 잔치로 큰 대회로 계속하도록 하겠습니다. 네, 화면 화면 띄워주세요. 화면. 네. 아마 결승을 여기 스튜디오에서 더 이상 못할 것 같은 그런 느낌 들죠, 그죠? 네. 그 사실 사실 이거는 저 준비된 대본이 없었는데 어, 이게 경기할 때. 업종 모드 말고 옆에 선수들 모습 보고 싶잖아요. 그렇죠? 그래서 제가 블리저드 우리 고경근 부사장님 와 계시지만 블리저드하고도 얘기하고 협회하고도 얘기하고 그다음에 이제 남은 거는 각 구단하고만 얘기하면 되는데 우리 이거 방음 모습 치우고요. LED 스크린 크게 다 설치하고 해서 여러분들 앞으로 더 선수 앞으로 나오고 그래서 할수 있는 환경도 계속 고민 중입니다. 그래서 이 추운데 왔는데 보지 못하고 저 바깥에 있고 밑에 있고 또 돌아가는 우리 팬들 유저분들한테 너무 죄송하고요. 그리고 두 번째로 어, 대국민 스타리그 생각보다 해외에서 너무 많이 봐주셔가지고 어, 영화하고 중국어 어, 그 동시 송출을 2016년 그 경기에서는 훨씬 더 늘려서 어, 송출하도록 하겠습니다. 그래서 화면에 도 나오지만 어, 중국에는 아, 마르스 TV 후어, 후어 마오 TV 그리고 어, 아프리카 TV 글로벌 사이트 그리고 대만 아, 트위치 여기서 계속 어, 하도록 하겠습니다. 아, 그리고 참고로 또 말씀을 드리면 어, 저희가 어, 이미 어, 첫 번째 어, 지지난 주에 저희가 이제 팀창 프로 팀을 창단을 했는데 아, 세 번째 슬라이드 띄워주세요. 어, 저희가 아프리카 TV 프릭스로 하스톤 프로 팀을 창단하고 있습니다. 아, 그래서 어, 이 여러분들 다양한 컨텐츠를 어, 어, 여러분들이 즐길 수 있게 어, 준비하도록 하겠습니다. 아, 그리고 어, 아까 광고 보셨죠? 오버워치. 아, 그래서 아직은 어, 클베가 시작이 안 되고 있는데 곧 아마 시작할 거라 할 거로 예상하고 있고요. 오버워치 게임을 여러분들이 같이 즐기고 할수 있기 위해서 어, 아마 지금 계획하고 있는 건 전국민 오디션을 통해서 우리 아마추어 선수들 또 젊은 선수들을 어, 참가할 수 있는 그런 프로그램도 해서 오버워치 어, 게임을 가지고 여러분들 같이 많이 참여할 그런 기회를 갖고 있습니다. 그리고 마지막 슬라이드 네 번째 슬라이드 올려주세요. 어, 지금 그 협회와 또 어, 이스포츠 캐스파 명예 회장 되시는 전병현 의원실 협의를 거치고 또 블리저드와 협의를 통해서. 아, 지금 스타크래프트 2 리그에서 어, 좀 어, 이슈가 되고 있는 어, 스베누 팀을 저희가 어, 인수해서 스타 2 리그를 어, 계속 이어갈 수 있도록 하겠습니다. 네. 그, 그리고 어, 스베누 팀 인수해서 스타크래프트 프릭스 스타크래프트 팀을 만들면서 동시에 그 지금 해외에 나가 있는 우리 아, 스타트 프로 선수들 중에서 아, 블리저드가 WCS 월 챔피언십 시리즈 규정을 좀 바꾸면서 
한국 선수들이 조금 곤란한 해외에서 곤란한 상황에 처한 선수, 선수들이 좀 있어요. 그래서 이 선수들을 협회와 블리저드와 협의해서 어, 지금 새로 만들어지는 프릭스 스타트 프로팀에 합류할 수 있는 방향으로 저희가 노력하도록 하겠습니다. 아, 또한 그 스타트 그 프로팀 만드는 과정에 있어서도 아, 우리 전 국민의 또 우리 젊은 세대들이 참여할 수 있도록 아, 그 전국 방방곡곡에서 아마추어 선수들을 저희가 선발을 해서 연습생, 프로 준비생 아, 그 커리어를 만들어서 아, 마, 저, 그 통로를 만들도록 열심히 노력하도록 하겠습니다. 예, 4분이 안 걸렸습니다. 예, 그래도 그 중요한 발표라 여러분들하고 같이 공유하고 싶었습니다. 추운 가운데 이렇게 함께해 주셔서 감사하고요. 조심해서 돌아가십시오. 고맙습니다. 네, 네 서수기 대표님의 발표가 있습니다. 자, 이 스포츠 발전을 위해서 어, 정말 끊임없이 노력해 주셔서 다시 한번 감사 인사를 드리도록 하겠습니다. 자, 이 스포츠는요. 여러분과 함께 만드는 겁니다. 자, 계속해서 아프리카 TV에서 펼쳐진 이 스포츠에 여러분의 많은 관심과 시청을 부탁드리면서 저는 이만 물러가도록 하겠습니다. 정말 추운 날씨인데 불구하고 많은 분들이 자리해 주셔서 감사드리고요. 저희 또한 열심히 노력해서 멋진 리그를 만들도록 하겠습니다. 함께해 주신 여러분 진심으로 고맙습니다. 월 리그 will continue in 2016 so please stay tuned for all the other leagues that are to happen in 2016 An another one will happen in the first half and there will be another StarCraft Brood War League in the other half so please stay tuned there were more StarCraft news to come and also StarCraft Brood War League will be live streamed worldwide much more in English and Chinese this year you can watch it on Africa TV, Global TV for Africa TV and other Chinese channels including Push TV so you guys can catch up on all the StarCraft World War news even including StarCraft 2 news so please stay tuned. And of course we have all the other Blizzard games too. Africa TV will create the professional team for Hearthstone this year. And we already have a StarCraft 2 team, which is called Africa Freaks SC2 Pro Team. Which is the Spano team, guys. I'm sorry for the delay, but we will be... Uh... So, to wrap this up, we have a Hearthstone team coming up, and we will be taking the Spano team and rename it to Africa Freaks StarCraft 2 Pro Team, so please stay tuned for more StarCraft 2. Well, thank you guys for tuning in for StarCraft Bird War. Please stay tuned for next Wednesday and Friday for StarCraft 2 GSL. Thank you guys. <laughs>